All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Gibbs. It's Monday morning, March 7th, and I'm really honored to be here with you this morning. I had a couple weeks off and I missed you guys uh, due to some events and travel and uh, things going on, but it's, uh, it's good to be back with you. And I appreciate you being here with me each Monday so that we could share concepts and ideas that will really help us stay focused on what's important. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, which today we're going to talk about focus. And there's an NLP concept. I am a certified NLP practitioner. NLP is neuro linguistic programming, uh, neuro being the mind, linguistic being around language, and programming, meaning that we have the ability to program our thoughts and change the way that we are responding to the world around us whenever we choose, um, that we are in control of our thoughts, our actions, and therefore our results. And so if there's anything going on in your life right now uh, that you could say you would like to change, let's look at what's in your power to change. Let's focus on what we can control rather than what we can't. So this NLP concept, um, some people might even say it sounds a lot like the law of attraction. And here it is, write this down. I told you to get your pencils ready this morning. Okay. So it is what you focus on expands. Write that down. What you focus on expands. Meaning that whatever you put your attention to, whatever you set your mind to is going to really continue to, to get bigger in your life. Uh, it, is, it is where your energy goes, right? Is what you're gonna attract into your reality. So whatever energy you choose to focus on in terms of your thoughts is exactly what you're going to get in terms of your reality. And that is the law of attraction. And so I think it's important for us to understand the power that we have because we really are a magnet, right? And so when we take a look at all of the things that are going right, when we look at all of the things that are positive, when we look at all the things that are good around us, um, we can attract more of that in. But you know, when you have that day, when all you seem to do is focus on what's going wrong, you may not realize that at the moment, what you might say to yourself at the moment is, oh my gosh, nothing is going right for me today. But the reason is because you're, you're setting your thoughts on one negative thing after the other. So it feels like there's this black cloud over you and all, all these things that are coming at you, nothing can go right. But I wonder if it's where we've set our intention, where we've set our energy and where we've set our mindset. And so this is such an important conversation today. It's not the first time I've talked to you about in the last two years either. Um, it seems to be something that I might even squeeze into some other conversations too, but it's because this is the core of how we can navigate our crazy wild life, right? Would you agree that the world is dramatically different today? Would you agree that when you think about where you were five years ago, forget about 10 years ago, if you could even think about where we were 24, 36 months ago, the world is very different today. We've been experiencing many changes in our society, in our economy, in our worldview, in our political climate, maybe even in our own belief system. And so because of that, it is so important to know where to set your sights. It is so important to think about how we can expand our life based on what we choose to focus on. Now, please don't think for a moment that I'm saying that you should um, not pay attention to what's happening around you or put the blinders on, but maybe to a degree. You know, there are a lot of things happening in our world right now that are scary, that are upsetting, that are frustrating, um, and, and I'm with you. And I'm truly with you. I'm not going to list them all here today because that would defeat the whole purpose of this conversation, but I am with you. And I think that we have to get clear about where we need to put our energy, because if we put our energy on the things that are out of our control, how does that leave us? It leaves us feeling frustrated, helpless. It leaves us focused on the things that are really negative 
And it creates a habit, which is the programming of focusing our energy in that direction. And how does that serve you? So I choose to be realistically optimistic. So that's a good term to write down, realistically optimistic, right? Because I've learned, I'm naturally very high on the optimism scale, as many of you might be. And that's a beautiful thing until it's not, right? Because what I've learned about my, my optimism is that I can sometimes hold on to something for too long, thinking it's just going to work out. And I may not always be focused on plan B as much as I should be. So that's my personal story. Um, but I'll just say that I've learned to become realistically optimistic. I, I'm, I'm not looking to become pessimistic, but I do want to want to look at things through some type of a clear lens, right? And so in, in what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that through that lens, I can balance out where I can place my optimism, where I can place my energy around the things that I can control. Because I can't control the price of gas right now, but I can control how I show up as a person every day. I can control what's happening in the world but I can pray for everyone. I can stay focused on being a good citizen. I can put my energy around showing up as someone who is compassionate to the people around her. Um, I, I can't control what's happening in every aspect of the economy from interest rates to uh, the great resignation and all the other things that we might be seeing and hearing about the business world today. But I can choose how I create goals and strategic plans for my own business, how I empower the people in our company to uh, show up and, and create opportunities for them and how we can stand firm for the culture and the value system that we have here as a company and provide opportunities for not only our leadership team, our staff, our agents and the clients that we serve, I can, I can put my, my energy on that because when I focus on that, really great things happen. So I think that this is really, you know, a conversation for a lot of us right now because it, it's hard and I get it because you can put your energy and your focus to all the things that are challenging and all the things that are unsettling and all the things that are, um, you know, scary about the world right now, or we can put our energy on more of the things that we can change, more of the good things rather than the bad. Um, and we can really talk about how we want to solve problems rather than marinating in the challenge itself, right? So that may be one small step today is if you, if this is really, you know, resonating with you and let me know if it is, I'd love to see your comments here on the chat um, or on Facebook, you know, if it is, then how will you make one small, one small step in the right direction in this concept of what we focus on expands? Um, I'm sure you've heard about it tomorrow. I'm kicking off a book club, The Happiness Advantage. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and you know, this really is, is running parallel to a lot of the concepts in this book because the, ha the happiness advantage, it talks about positive psychology and how a positive brain can fuel success in your work and life. And I wanna make this clear. It's not about just sitting and being positive with a big smile on your face and, and thinking that everything around you is just gonna fall into place. No, it's really about how we put our mindset into action and how we know that um, when we focus on the positive things, we focus on what we can control, when we focus on uh, what makes us feel fulfilled, when we focus on gratitude and when we focus on the things that we have the ability to make better, improve, to change, then that's what starts to really grow in our lives. And that's what starts to attract more opportunity, more happiness, more satisfaction, which all starts to lead to how you start to engage in life differently, how you show up differently, how you think differently, how it opens you up to possibility. And that's really what starts to create different actions. And it's our actions that create results. And so it's kind of like, you know, really, I think getting things in order putting things into the right order so that you can live your best life. 
Because again, what you focus on grows, what you think about expands, and what you dwell upon determines your destiny. I believe that was Robin Sharma who said that. What you focus on grows, what you think about expands, and what you dwell upon determines your destiny. Because if you're feeling stuck, I'm going to challenge you to take a look at what you've been thinking lately. Because it's, it's probably like holding up a mirror. So again, it's a crazy world. There's a lot to think about and navigate. And, um, you know, I, I do my best to stay informed and I limit how much news I watch. That's just what works for me. You know, I, I choose to um, really put my energy where it's going to make a difference. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you today? You know, maybe if you are taking notes, you want to jot that down. You know, what does it mean for me? How can I really set my thoughts where they will start to expand in a positive way, right? Because I'm sure you've heard that old quote, I don't even know who said it, that one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day, right? So this really uh, is the key to, I think, having a success mindset. And success, you get to decide what the definition is. But if we're looking for positive outcomes and successful outcomes, then we, we really need to understand that there's a science behind that. That's really what this is. There's a science behind this. You know, positive psychology has expanded our ability to understand this. Uh, neuro-linguistic programming, NLP. You know, our brains are so complex. Our brains are fascinating, complex machines. And they have the ability to process millions of bits of data throughout the day, right? And so when you think about all the data coming at you, all the information flying at you, any system that you're operating, right? You want to make sure it doesn't become overloaded because what happens if it becomes overloaded? It crashes, right? So your brain is this really amazing complex system. How are you making sure that that system does not overload and crash? Because millions of pieces of data are coming at you and it's, it's organized in a way to help you, your brain's trying to help you make sense of the world around you, right? From the conversations you're having, the, the media, the news, the things you're reading, the podcasts you're listening to, the, even the music you're listening to, conversations at home, all of it, right? It's, it's doing its best to help organize and make sense of this information coming at you, which is really your filter and how you make sense of the world, right? So if there's a lot of information coming at you, um, your brain just has to choose what to grab onto, right? There's a part of the brain that helps you filter this. It's called the reticular activating system or your RAS. That's your filter. And so, if the RAS is working uh, to filter information, it needs to have some type of an idea from you, kind of a blueprint as to what information it should hold on to, what it should grab onto. And so your RAS is determining that based on, on your thoughts, right? Based on your level of confidence, self-esteem, happiness, your belief system, because all of that is what you grab onto, right? So it creates a pattern creates a pattern. And so that's how your RAS works with you and starts to filter out information. So if your RAS is seeing a pattern of negative thinking or low self-esteem or a lack of confidence or bitterness in your thinking or um, you know your belief system is not uh, supporting you at a high level, it's just gonna attract the same type of thoughts. So when you change the way that you think and you change the way that you see yourself and the world around you, when you set your thoughts, because you can choose your thoughts, when you set your thoughts in a different direction, then your RAS has created new filters. So just like a computer, right? Your brain has kind of like a search function. <laughs> and so we can program our thinking and change that programming whenever we want. 
So this is this is what lights me up is this work, as you can tell. Um, so if you have more questions about this, reach out to me. But you know, I can give you an example of how easily this this uh, how this works very easily. So if I say to you, um, a red fire truck with a Dalmatian in the front seat. Do you see the image of a red fire truck with the black and white dog sitting in the front seat? Do you see the image? Yes. You don't see the words, you see the picture, right? Because your brain thinks in, picture, in pictures. If I now say to you, I want you to think about your favorite beach, do you see the beach? So you see how fast your thoughts can change? You know that because on any given day, you have your thoughts changing rapidly from one moment to the next, depending on what's coming in around you. So we, we need to practice how we can create these filters that serve us. So write that down. Do my, does my thinking serve me? Do I have filters on my thinking that really attract what I need to know today? the best opportunities, the, the most strategic ways of thinking? Um, am I attracting things that line up with my belief system, right? Because your RAS can strengthen your belief system too, and your beliefs can strengthen the ability of your RAS. Am I, am I speaking to anyone today? Is this resonating with you? Did you need to hear this in some fashion? Yeah, and, and here's the thing. Um, not to get too scientific with you today, but I just, here are the bullet points. The bullet points are what you focus on expands. That the law of attraction is true for you and for me and for all of us. And so therefore you can attract what you want in your life. And it starts with how you think. Your thoughts should always line up with your values and your beliefs because what you think is what you will say and do, right? And those actions are what bring results. And that if there's anything going on in your life right now that is not serving you, that is not providing you with the results that you want, where is your opportunity to create change in that? what is in your control and what is not in your control. Because when we focus all of our energy on what we can't control, it will leave us feeling helpless. It will leave us feeling frustrated and frustration when you are stuck in frustration for too long, it will break you down and you will stop thinking of options, right? So we, we wanna get out of frustration and into fascination, because when you're fascinated by something, you're inquisitive and curious and you're gonna start asking questions. And those questions are what can lift your thinking and move you out of feeling stuck. So those are some of the bullet points for, for you this morning. And that it is a dramatically different world. And there are a lot of things that we could focus our time, our, our thoughts and our energy on uh, that would, would probably not serve us. And so we have to look at some of those, um, some of those thoughts and really ask us, you know, ask ourselves, where can we reprogram, right? Because our brain is an operating system and we have to make sure it's not gonna crash. So a couple questions in the chat. Where do, you, where do you fit idealistic against the optimism realism? Jill, do you mind if you come on and just clarify that for me a little bit and, and all of us listening? Oh, sure. Um, it actually, you know, I take notes while you continue to do your, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, you, you speak between, you know, the reality check and where to place your optimism and you have control. But it seems that with a level of optimism, you've got to have a bit of sort of an idealistic way of engaging life. So how, how much, I mean, can you really control that idealism enough to regulate what gets filtered through so you have, so you don't get overwhelmed or um, you wind up in the same place when you try to be realistic and you're being dragged by the optimism into another place that's not going to serve you. So I did, again, I didn't know if you had sort of a, a take on that. 
So, you know, it's, it, this is an interesting uh, question, really, because idealism itself, right, when we think about the term, it's a set of beliefs or philosophies, right? Right, or what you're drawn to, right, right. Yeah, and it's always very personal. That's the other thing, too, right? There's idealism is, is very much about your thoughts and beliefs, right, and, or, or what you identify perhaps in a group. But it is it is very personal. So there's not one set of ideas necessarily. Um, but the thing about idealism is that, like most things, if it's not managed, it can become, I think, something that works against us too. Because you want your idealism to be realistic, right? Because right. and and that's where I think you're going with this. Um, I believe. Yeah. No, you're right. That that, that thanks. That's clarity for me. Because again. If you're in a place where everything is ideal, idealistically going to work out, you know, I mean, if that's the backdrop, then how much credence do you put into what really is going on and avoiding a reality check? Uh, so, you know, that's why when you, you know, being optimistic is great, being realistic is great. But if you're always defaulting back to an idealistic position, then you're not being as ser well served, if you can use your terms, you know. So I just right. didn't know. And, I, and, and that may be why I, you know, use my my term about being uh, realistically optimistic, you know, because I can be, an, you know, I, I can be an idealist and I'm a visionary. I believe I'm a visionary, um, but I'm also personally, I'm someone who's who's more about the execution of the vision, uh, which, you know, but there are people who are truly just visionaries. Right. And who are are thinking big and creating these ideas, and that's great. And usually, it takes a team of people, then, right? Because the person who has the great vision is not always the person who's going to be the ex, you know execute on it, right? And so then the person who can execute on the uh, other person's vision is also probably looking for a team of people who can get into the the details, right? Of of getting it done. And so I say that because it comes back to your question about, you know, realism, of, excuse me, being idealistic and realism, because alone in the thoughts, right, of, of being idealistic, you can get, some people can get lost in the vision, right, and therefore, is it really realistic if you can't act on it? Right. So I think that it takes a group of people sometimes to create that. And so and to balance it out with, um, you know, the excitement that optimism brings and the strategy or strategic thinking that realism brings. That's the beautiful blend, I think, the marriage there. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, no, and I appreciate the, the concept of a group process because mm -hmm. it does help, especially if you're working in a team or the perception that something has to be accomplished, how you're all going to get there. And if one's the naysayer and one's just at the other end of the spectrum, then there's a conversation that's a little different. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, great question. And, you know, I'll just uh, add to that and maybe close on this, you know, that it's really important for us to get clear about what is in our value system. What is part of our belief system? What is our vision and our goals for ourselves personally and professionally and how that you know, starts to work together? Because the other thing about uh, what we focus on expands, you know, when you get into working as a group, uh, which many of us do in our careers, it's important that the group has, you know, the same understanding of the vision and the activities that need to be lined up to, to, to execute on that vision, um, because you could find yourself becoming part of group thinking, right? And so, you know, as what the group starts to focus on expands. And so there has to be a healthy balance of you know, knowing where, what is the plan? Because if we start to think differently and get off track, um, or if we start to have doubts about the actual plan itself, you know, can we bring ourselves back to the original vision? Because, you know, there can be sometimes, you know, that group thinking and what we focus on starts to expand in a different direction. So, um, so that's the other part is, you know, like the like I was saying about your RAS, your RAS has a blueprint. It has a foundation to work from to filter all that information based on the way you've been thinking and the way that you've been 
showing up and the way you see yourself, right? Because that's the operating system that the RAS has at that moment. And if you start to change that a little bit, then it's going to start to create different filters. So I think it's always about being aware and, and being awake at the end of the day, right? Because you know, we don't want to go through life being a little asleep at the wheel. We want to know that we are the masters of our own fate, that we can, you know, be the captain of our destiny, that you can co-create with the creator and you can, you know, start to look at some things in your life that aren't serving you and make decisions, even if they're small, uh, to start with around how to make those changes that serve you. Um, it's, it's not, it's about not accepting in any way, shape, or form that you are a victim of your circumstances ever. So that's where I'm going to end today. I hope this was, uh, I trust, not hope, I trust that this was exactly what someone needed to hear this morning. I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much. We'll continue again every Monday morning. Uh, and tomorrow we start the Happiness Advantage Book Club. There's information on the Mojo page. That'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern. Really excited about that. That's a four-part series, absolutely free. Join me for that. Um, and if you find value in this uh, Monday Morning Mojo platform, please share with your friends. Make sure they like our Facebook group or join it, I should say, um, and also uh, connect with the Zoom link so that they can be on here with me on Monday mornings. And for all of you who are watching through Facebook, thanks so much. Appreciate you. Have a great day and I'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Take care.